Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, in this video, we will explain orbital infections. Orbital infection may occur as the result of odontogenic infection. Redness and uh, swelling of the eyelids is seen in such patients. The vascular and neural components of the orbit are involved. In this uh, clinical picture, a patient with left uh, canine space infection with the periorbital and superficial uh, temporal spaces extension is seen. The orbital septum is a thin sheet of fibrous tissue that originates from the orbital rim periosteum and blends with the tendon of the levator palpebris superioris muscle superiorly and inserts into the tarsal plate inferiorly. The palpebral fissure is the area between eyelids. Here you can see this is the palpebral fissure and uh, orbital septum, this one. This is the tendon of the levator palpebri superioris muscle. Here you can see that the orbital septum is here blends with the tendon of the levator palpebri superioris muscle and inferiorly this is the orbital septum and it inserts in the inferior tarsal plate. Now orbital infections uh, are of two types, uh, periorbital or preceptal cellulitis that is an infection of the eyelid structures interior to the orbital septum will occasionally lead to an uh, orbital cellulitis or post septal cellulitis that is infection behind the orbital septum. In this picture, you can see this one is the orbital septum. So the infection interior to the orbital septum will be periorbital or preceptal cellulitis. And the infection behind the, uh, this uh, orbital septum, uh, that will be the uh, post septal or orbital cellulitis. The patient with the preceptal cellulitis uh, may present with the redness, swelling, and pain in the periorbital area, mild fever, slightly uh, blurred vision, teary eyes, and some reduction in vision. Uh, redness and swelling of the eyelids is seen in these photographs. Uh, CT scan uh, may be done to see the extension of the infection. Uh, periorbital cellulitis uh, requires aggressive treatment and should be treated. Uh, with IV antibiotics in order to prevent uh, its further uh, spread, that is orbital cellulitis and cavernous sinus thrombosis. Periorbital infection arising uh, from uh, an infected uh, primary molar uh, is seen in uh, uh, this uh, picture. Uh, note the periorbital edema, uh, uh, erythema, uh, and uh, later displacement of the uh, pupil. Uh, the lateral displacement of the pupil uh, is clearly seen on the CT scan. Uh, CT shows uh, opacification of the left maxillary sinus. Here, this right side of the maxillary sinus is normal, where uh, CT shows the opacification of the left uh, maxillary uh, sinus and also the opacification of the uh, left ethmoidal sinus. This ethmoidal sinus on the right side is normal, where is on the left side there is an opacification. Uh, along with the medial and inferior uh, orbital wall thickness. Here you can see the thickness on the, along the medial and inferior orbital wall. Now a brief uh, overview of orbital cellulitis as we mentioned uh, earlier that orbital cellulitis is inflammation of eye tissues behind the orbital septum. The infection usually spread from uh, uh, either the adjacent sinuses or through the blood uh, when it affects the rear of the eye, it is uh, known as a retroorbital cellulitis. Signs and uh, symptoms of uh, orbital cellulitis are related to the eye. And the patient with orbital uh, cellulitis presents with a proptosis of thalmoplegia, pain on eye movement, uh, loss of vision. These signs and symptoms are absent in periorbital cellulitis. So these uh, signs and symptoms are the differentiating point uh, between the orbital cellulitis and periorbital cellulitis. Photographs uh, show orbital cellulitis, uh, CT scan of orbital cellulitis uh, showing proptosis. 
Uh, if orbital cellulitis is not treated uh, properly and well in time, then it can lead to severe morbidity and mortality. Thank you. Wish you best of luck.